Each year, Fortune Magazine recognizes 100 businesses as the very best to work for. Well, one of Utah's own has been named the third best company to work for in the entire nation. CHG Healthcare Service is one of the largest providers of healthcare staffing in the entire country. And here to tell us just why his business is recognized as a great place to work is Michael Weinholz. He's the CEO of CHG Healthcare. So, Michael, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question, I guess, why don't you tell me a little bit about CHG and, and what you guys do? Sure, and thank you. Our people are very proud and excited to be ranked number three on Fortune's list. And CHG is the leading provider of medical staffing services in the United States. We're the largest provider of temporary physician staffing, which has been our core business for over 33 years. But we're also a leading provider of staffing services for nurses and allied health professionals. And we have a permanent placement division which helps our clients source permanent staff in their hospitals as well. Um, as I said, our people are very proud of this ranking uh, and proud of the fact that we're an important part of the healthcare delivery system. In 2012, for example, the healthcare professionals that we provided in all 50 states saw over 15 million patients. So our people feel like we're not only a great business, but we're making a difference as well. So what is it that makes it such a great place to work? You're, you're on the list, so what, what makes yeah. it so special? Well, we have great people, and I know everyone says that, <laughs> but, uh, but we focus probably more on culture than most companies do. Um, a lot of companies think that culture is you know, fourth or fifth down the list of uh, things of importance that you should focus on uh, as a business, but we realize that we are in the people business, and as such, we think that uh, having a people-centric culture uh, where people feel appreciated and respected uh, allows us to attract the best people in the industry uh, and that same type of culture uh, enables us to invest in people's development uh, and growth and so we end up with uh, literally the best people in the industry who, um, who perform every day and they want to bring their best selves to work every day because of the culture and because they feel appreciated and, uh, and we think that's a huge uh, advantage mm -hmm. and um, so culture is our number one strategy and we're good at all the other things as well like execution and strategy and discipline but without the culture that allows us to attract great people uh, we wouldn't be as good at those other things and, and it, for most businesses you understand the principle of getting good people in place and then keeping them there not only for a low turnover uh, rate, but also when someone's been in the job for a while and they're happy and they continue to progress, they get better at it. Is that what you found? They do, and our culture also results in us having the lowest turnover rate in our industry. And to your point, because we have longer tenured people sitting in those important seats that compete every day, um, it, it creates a tremendous competitive advantage for me. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of people, they think of culture as the soft stuff, mm -hmm. but for us, it's our main strategy, and we know it works because not only are we recognized for being a great place to work, but we've been the top performer in our industry every year for the last decade since we've been focusing on culture so much. Now on this Fortune Top 100 list, you were ninth last year, you jumped to third this year. So what did you do differently in the last 12 months that made for a six spot jump? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know that we did a lot differently, but we're always trying to do more for our people. Um, each year we try to add uh, at least one new benefit. Uh, in 2012, we added uh, an on-site medical clinic uh, at two of our larger offices, plus uh, an expanded wellness program. Um, so people uh, can sense that we care about their health and wellness and well-being. And, uh, and they appreciate that. What are some of the practices to, to get started? You guys are the third best in the country at this. If another business leader watching this saying, that's, that's something I want to aspire to, what would be sort of the first few steps you would, uh, you would recommend for someone to create a culture like this? Yeah, sure. Well, there's a lot of talk in the business community now about employee engagement. And uh, we think employee engagement is critical. Uh, but you have to be scientific about it. I mean, there's, there's an art to creating a great culture, but there's also science. So you can measure uh, employee engagement through the appropriate surveys and, and getting feedback from, from, your, from your people. Uh, and then you have a, a benchmark uh, from which you can continue to improve your engagement scores each mm -hmm. year. So our leaders, for example, are not only measured on the financial success of their business units, they're also judged by their employee engagement and satisfaction scores. Uh, and there's a direct correlation. I don't think we've ever had someone who was, 
who had poor engagement and satisfaction scores and was a top performer. Mm -hmm. So we believe there's a direct correlation between having uh, a highly motivated and engaged workforce uh, and great performance. It changes the, dyna the dynamic between a manager and, and someone that they manage if they are not only judged on their performance, but how well they like working with them. Is that essentially what you're getting at? Yeah, and all of our leaders um, have 360-degree uh, reviews, so mm -hmm. they get reviewed by the people that they supervise. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that helps reinforce the importance uh, of engagement. And if we see areas uh, when we're measuring engagement, uh, at the end of the year. When we see areas where n leaders need to improve, um, our leadership development team puts together a plan to help our leaders improve in those areas so that they can have better relationships with their people and raise their engagement mm -hmm. scores. You made the point earlier about company culture. And I, I, if I understand correctly, you host something like 270 employee events a year. Now, the first thing that pops into my mind when I hear that is that's a lot of birthday cake. <laughs> but are these just birthday parties like we would think of in an office setting, or what type of events are we talking about? No, we, we're big on celebration and recognition. Um, so in addition to birthday parties and anniversaries, um, we're recognizing uh, business milestones for teams, uh, for individuals. Um, we try to make an event out of everything that we do. So if there's an off-site leadership meeting, mm -hmm. there's usually a, a, a team building event or something that our corporate events team uh, helps, to, uh, helps to promote. Uh, a lot of, uh, as I said, recognition, a lot of awards um, that we build uh, activities around as well. So um, there's something going on literally every day. There's some celebration or recognition event going on every single day mm -hmm. in our business. With an organization the size of the one you have now, I, I presume you don't hire everyone individually, but at some point you probably had more of a touch with hiring people. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you looked for? What were some tricks maybe that you could share uh, in, in trying to find the right person? Yeah. Well, what we do today, our policy is we hire for cultural fit. Uh, and, and we believe we can train mm -hmm. for the, the skills in our business. So we do um, uh, peer-reviewed and team interviewing. So if someone is interviewing for a position on a particular team, we'll have the entire team interview that person and determine whether they're going to be a good cultural fit for the team. Um, and um, so we hire for culture first, and then we train uh, for business skills. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a, a question specific to the healthcare industry. Uh, the last year, late last year, the chamber rolled out what we call the employer's uh, toolbox. Uh, this is sort of a, a best practices, things that other businesses have done that have been successful in containing healthcare costs. Um, one of those mentioned specifically uh, adding an on-site clinic, which is something you guys have done at CHG. Uh, what tips would you maybe give for people or, or what sort of advice would you have for folks that are considering doing that? Is it something you would do uh, again now in hindsight? Is it, was it a positive move for you? Yes, we're, and we're just completing our first year with a new clinic and frankly we didn't think we would get a return on the investment until a couple years out but what we've discovered is that it's already paid for itself mm -hmm. um, because uh, even in the first week for example we treated four of our employees on site who otherwise would have had to have gone to an emergency room. Mm. Um, but more importantly, it's a great uh, benefit for our people. It's so convenient. They don't have to take a half a day or a full day off to go to the doctor's office. Mm. They can uh, call down and, and make an appointment and, and get seen the same day in, in, in many cases. And, uh, and it's also a, a benefit for their families, so they can bring their families to the clinic, uh, clinic as well. So it's a great benefit, so it's great for morale. Mm -hmm. It's a, another thing that boosts morale and in employee engagement and satisfaction. Uh, but from a business perspective, uh, we found that it paid for itself in the first year in the, in the healthcare savings that we achieved. Michael Weinholz is the CEO of the CHG Healthcare, the number three best place in the entire country to work for as far as employee satisfaction. Michael, thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you.